I'm Rufus Nadi and this is my studio. We are located here in Traverse City. And this is where I play with my tools and paint. When I started off uh, as a kid, um, I always wanted to make things look the way I saw them with my eyes. And <clears throat> I really got interested in drawing uh, figuratively when I was really young. And I used to do these pencil drawings of, these black and white pencil drawings of uh, faces of people. So as I got a little bit older, when I got into uh, to school, art school, uh, taking art classes, I had a lot of background in doing uh, life drawing and all that kind of stuff. But after I got out of school, I was really interested in doing these. Well, I think it was probably before I got out of school. I was interested in doing these little line squiggles uh, and work little textural kinds of drawings uh, which I continue to do today and it was basically just little curly cues little circles uh, that I would do over and over and over again and build up surfaces build up texture uh, to the point where I something would start to evolve or, or, or emerge from those little textural drawings and so Anyway, I was always looking for a way to convert that texture, the pen and ink texture, to paint. And for years and years, I tried a lot of different kinds of things that just didn't work. And as time went by, um, I there were some new materials that were invented. <clears throat> and one of them is string gel. And string gel um, has a certain kind of body to it that does not, so it, has, it creates a relief surface. And so those drawings that I was doing a long time ago, I started doing some of those kinds of drawings with string gel. So it took many, many years before I could actually translate some of the things that I wanted to do at that time to an actual form of painting. So when I moved over to, uh, uh, from sculpture to painting, um, I found that I was not really interested in uh, painting on a square so much. So what I did is I started to think about a painting as, as an object. And what would I do with that object? What would I do, what would I do with this square to make it like something that I would be interested in working on? And so what I decided to do was just to kind of get creative with every aspect of what a painting is. So like the frame, um, why does the frame have to be square? Why can't we make it organic, or, you know, make it a shape? Um, it's consistently the same size all, all the way around. So if it's like a one, one and a half, a two inch uh, uh, canvas, it's, consistent, it's consistently that way. So my thoughts were, why can't it be two inches here, and three inches over there, or five inches over here? So I wanted the canvas to be more shaped. So I got interested. In, so basically what I was doing is I wanted to create, construct uh, a surface to paint on, uh, much like you would do a piece of sculpture. But I wanted to have my own kind of stretcher bar, my own kind of canvas, my own kind of surface to work on. And so I started calling these uh, construction paintings because they were based, they turned into constructions.
My focus became so heavily on the materials as a sculptor, uh, I was always concerned about what kind of materials I was working with. So in the process of becoming a construction painter, uh, the process became a lot more important to me than the actual imagery. I, I, when I first started doing these construction paintings, I was not so much interested in imagery, even though I was doing some imagery, um, it was not, it was, it was secondary, it was not my first option. The first option was the materials that I was working with and the process of putting those materials together to create the kind of surfaces that I wanted to work on, uh, to create the kind of shapes that I wanted to work on. Um, so it truly did become painting as object. So I'm really focused a lot on melding materials together, kind of seamless, so that you don't really know what I'm, you know, what uh, the materials are because they become, they become obscured by the painting process. But there are a lot of things, a lot of different kinds of materials that can do things that canvas can't do. Uh, like I work a lot of times with vinyls and different kinds of plastics that, that are compatible with uh, acrylic paint. And I like to work with acrylic paint because acrylic paint uh, is more versatile you can do a lot more things with it, especially when you're talking about building things. So moving to Northern Michigan was, it was uh, pretty challenging. Um, Cause I left uh, Los Angeles <clears throat> via Santa Fe, New Mexico, and these places where there's so much art going on, there's so many artists, there's so many different uh, events, activity. And then I come to Northern Michigan where, you know, in terms of the art scene, it's like, it's like crickets, <laughs> you know? Um, so, but one of the things that ab about my work and my process is that wherever I am, the environment has a big effect on my work. Um, when I was in Los Angeles, my work had more of an urban kind of edge to, to it, <clears throat> kind of angst, angsty. Um, and then when I came to Northern Michigan, um, it's like the, the, the beauty of the place. Uh, you look around, I mean, I, I, there are a lot of landscape painters up in this area, and I understand why there are you know, so many landscape painters because it's just a gorgeous place. But um, the process is, is pretty much nailed down, so it's just a matter of trying to make those things in my environment work with the process, with my own personal process and my own direction. So in that sense, I feel like <clears throat> my work, it visually has changed a little bit, but, but technically I'm still working the same way. I'm still working the same way in Northern Michigan as I was working in Los Angeles. A lot of dreaming, I used to do a lot of dreaming about art. And I still do, I still have those dreams. Like sometimes I see colors that are you know, I see colors in my dreams that are impossible to make, you know, it's so, so vivid. My dreams can become really vivid sometimes. So. There's actually a piece that came out of my dreams, this little, I want to show it to you. Mm -hmm. This piece here, it's a dream that I had uh, last year, I was telling Carol about it. I woke up and I said, oh, I just had this dream about this shape. Uh, it's a little bit uh, unconventional and yeah, all work is, all art is not for everybody. And I know that my work my work is a bit confrontational to those people who have it all summed up 
in their minds about what an actual painting is. You know, when, when you see my work, yeah, it's a little different. It looks a little bit different than somebody that's just focused on making a picture. I'm not making a picture. You know, that my, my work may have a picture inside of it or something, or, but it's not, it's not a picture. It is a, it is a thing in itself. That, and that's why I talk about it as painting as object. It's an object. So to, if one wants to completely, I won't say completely, but if one wants to really uh, engage my work, I think it's better to start off with it as you would engage a piece of sculpture, uh, rather than engaging it as a picture, because it's not a picture. It, it's, it is an object, it is a thing. So even though I'm really heavily uh, focused on process, uh, secondary to that are the, is the thematic directions of my work. And um, with that, I, I started, I basically started uh, a conversation in terms of themes uh, many, many years ago. I became really interested in the, the kind of the psychosocial parts of my environment, like people's behavior. I remember as a kid, uh, I was, I'm from, I was, I was raised in, um, um, I was raised in Jim Crow South, uh, East Texas, and we used to have to drink at uh, the colored only uh, water fountains. We had to go to the colored only bathrooms, um, and it was segregated. It was completely segregated. And I used to, as a kid, I was curious about that. I used to ask my dad all the time. I know he got sick of me asking questions about that stuff. Dad, why do we have to drink at the, the <clears throat> what do we have to drink at the, out of the spigot? Why can't we drink out of the, the fountain that has a cooler? Uh, dad, why, can't, why do we have to go into this bathroom? Uh, why can't we use that one? And he would always say, that's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. That as a kid, and there were so, so many things like that, but as a kid, that was not satisfying to me, just because that was the way it was. So I became really interested in why, why, why are things the way that they are? Like why we live in this country uh, where some people do can do one thing and other people can't. And so I was always interested in why like the perception of these things. And so my work has a lot to do with perception, like how we perceive, why do people perceive things? Why do one group of people perceive things one way and another group perceive in a whole different way? Uh, so I started to look at things universally. It's like, why do human beings behave the way they behave? And so I got more interested in the psychosocial, the psychological part of human beings, of human behavior. And I spent a lot of time with, uh, you know, in the psychological communities. It's more of a larger interest than it is a smaller interest. It's instead of the micro, it is the macro. Uh, so, yeah, there are a lot of a lot of things that are not fair. Uh, <clears throat> but I'm more interested in why, the why of it. Thank you.